Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. Today I want to talk about the Haas effect, or as it's otherwise known, the precedence effect. This was something I was introduced to by speaker designer Paul Barton more than 20 years ago, and I'm so thankful for that because understanding it helped me immensely in terms of understanding speaker measurements and also how speakers behave in rooms. So if you don't know about the Haas or precedence effect, I encourage you to watch all of this video because it's going to help you too. In a nutshell, in 1949, Dr. Helmut Haas described the work he had done that showed that sounds from two discrete sources, providing they arrived at a listener's ears within a time window of about 40 milliseconds would be heard by the listener as one sound. Beyond 40 milliseconds, they separated into two sounds, but within that 40 milliseconds, one acoustical event, and that's important. Research into the Haas or precedence effect has also shown that in terms of localization, where the sound came from, Despite those two sounds basically fusing as one, it's the initial sound, the one that first arrived, that tells us where the sound came from. The second one joins in, but it doesn't mess up our perception of the original source of sound. We know that it came from, say, right there. However, that second sound, or third one as well, fourth, if they all arrive within that time window, aren't without effect. Research has shown that the additional sound or sounds can make that initial sound, although the localization remains the same, more spacious. So what does that have to do with a loudspeaker playing music? Well, if loudspeakers beam their sound like lasers into our ears, or we listened in the great outdoors, a wide open field, or in an anechoic chamber which has no reflections, well, it wouldn't mean much. But loudspeakers are played in real rooms. And loudspeakers don't beam like lasers. They have what is called an on-axis response, the sound directly in front of the speaker, and they have the off-axis response, which is basically the sound it puts out everywhere else. So it's that combination of the room and the speaker or speakers that matters because speakers are shooting their sound ahead, but also to the sides, upwards and downwards, and the walls in a normal room are quite close. You're not usually listening in a gymnasium. And the point Paul wanted to make to me that day and I want to make to you is the sound we hear at our listening seat keeping in mind the Haas effect, is the combination of the direct sound from the speaker, but also the reflected sound off the walls. It fuses into one. And why is that? Because those sounds arrive at a normal listening seat, and I'm saying a normal listening seat in terms of a normal room, not like a gymnasium, within that Haas effect time window. They're fused as one. However, the localization of the sounds, which has been researched, remains that the first arrival dominates, and we can say the sound came from there. But the overall sound that you hear, the timbre of the speaker was something else Paul wanted to reinforce to me, is the room and the speaker working as one. It's this fusion of sounds, the ones coming from the speaker or speakers, and the ones coming from the walls, they're being reflected from the output of the speakers to the listening chair. That's why if you've ever heard somebody talk about the on and off axis responses of the speakers, the measurements in front of the speakers, but also all around it, why that's so important. Because in a good speaker design, in general, what you want is the on and off axis responses to be similar. They'll never be identical because the way drivers behave, you can't get exactly the response in a traditional forward firing speaker at every increment off axis, but you want them to be similar. And that's because they're fusing together. You want that on axis and off axis fusion event to have similar responses. You don't want their sounds to be different because that will confuse your brain. You want what's coming out of the speaker and what's coming off the walls 
to be roughly the same sound so when you're at your listening chair it's all balanced and that's also why if you ever hear someone say oh i really had to fiddle with the speaker to get it to sound right and it takes an immense amount of work oftentimes it means that the on-axis response and the off-axis responses from the speaker are not the same and they're kind of fighting with the room but when they're similar you have a better room interaction by the way i can add one more thing to help you better understand this whole direct and reflected sound that's the categories there broadly placed in. There's the direct sound from the speaker or speakers in a stereo pair. So that's the sound that comes right out of the speaker to your ears with no obstructions. There are the first reflections. Now you'll see that I tend to use my hands horizontally. That's because humans are more accustomed to sounds around us than above or below us. It's an evolutionary thing, but it all factors in. The first reflections are the sounds that have taken one bounce, the wall to the left or right of the speakers, off the floor, off the ceiling, that then hit the listener. Then there's the reverberant sound field, and that's multiple reflections around the room. The sounds can travel behind the speaker, bounce off a couple walls, but they will eventually land at the listener. And if you're wondering, Really, can a speaker project behind itself? Well, yes, it can. I've been in an anechoic chamber, which takes away all the reflections, stood behind a speaker, and yeah, you can hear sound behind the speaker. So the sound coming out of a speaker is radiating in all directions to varying degrees. Now I could go on and on because this is a really broad topic, but I'm gonna cut it off there. Because the point I wanted to make is that when you're listening to a pair of speakers in a room, you're not only listening to the speakers. The Haas effect tells us that our brains naturally fuse sounds that come in with a short enough time window. So what you're really listening to is the speakers and the room. And that's crucial to know. And I hope that helped. Thank you for watching.